Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure to like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And it feels good to be coming back to you guys on a Sunday. We have an election tomorrow on Monday night up in Canada. The icebox to our north, our little brothers up there. And I did a video on the election and what I want to happen. Uh, this video is going to be more on what I think will happen. So I'd recommend watching both this video and the last video that I did, but I still think it's important to kind of give a little bit of a breakdown. The Conservative Party and Liberal Party are nearly identical. Uh, even the days of Stephen Harper are long gone. You have Aaron O'Toole, uh, who is running on the conservative ticket. He is the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, and essentially, besides maybe like two or three economic issues, he is indistinguishable from Justin Trudeau, and he is just as much of a joke in many ways as Trudeau, and it's even worse in my opinion because he's literally a nominal conservative, yet he's literally to the left of Phil Scott, which is probably the most left-leaning Republican notable official that we have down here in America, the governor of Vermont. He's literally to the left of Joe Biden. So that kind of tells you where the conservative party is, especially on social issues and things like the restrictions and the, and the passports, etc. He's just as bad as Trudeau. The only conservative party that's running is the People's Party of Canada, and they're doing very well in the opinion polling. As a result, if you look at the opinion polling, they got like 1% last time. Right now in some of these polls, they're cracking 10%. That doesn't account for a potential shy PPC voter because they're being labeled as far right, even though they're really not. They're just like a more nationalist version of like Rand Paul, basically, which is pretty good for Canada. And it's not really a bad thing at all. In fact, his policies are pretty solid. He would basically save Canada. But I think a lot of Canadians are just a little bit too far gone for that. But still, if they get enough votes, they can uh, at least push the Conservative Party to the right in the ensuing elections. Because either way, the Conservative Party was not really going to have much of a shot at getting more seats than Trudeau, even if they were going to get more votes than Trudeau. Because again, the popular vote does not really matter. What matters is the seat by riding. It's kind of like the districts in the House of Representatives. It's a first-past-the-post thing, except in Canada, they're more open to voting for third parties, although there really are two main parties. So what we do know in the polling as well is that the NDP, which is like the Bernie wing, even to the left of the Liberal Party, is actually, you know, polling better than they were last time. They're likely to do better, which will also take seats away from the Liberal Party. So I don't think it's going to be a blowout in that regard. The Green Party is down from last time in all polling. The Bloc Québécois is polling roughly about the same as they did last time. I think they're going to lose a few seats as well, possibly to the NDP. They only really run candidates in Quebec. Uh, so we know this. So in the 2019 election, I want to do the provincial prediction like I did last time. Didn't do so well predicting them last time, but I will also be giving a seat prediction as well, uh, a generic seat prediction. There's a big margin of error. I don't expect it to be 100% accurate, but what we do know right here is that a lot of the, the western provinces, uh, the prairie provinces, typically do lean more conservative, although the PPC will likely be doing fairly well there, which could take some votes away. The maritime provinces are fairly liberal. Quebec is, is liberal, even though the Bloc Québécois has a large support group there. And Ontario, historically, I mean, Ontario has gone for conservatives in the past if they have a really good year, like 2011. But uh, this cycle, it's probably going to stay with the Liberal Party. So I wanted to do this map again. I would expect the Liberal Party to win in Ontario. I would expect them to take Quebec. I would expect them to take Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland up there. They're going to be carrying all of those. Now, I do expect the NDP, because they're doing better and they typically do well in British Columbia, I think they will get the most ridings in British Columbia. Although, like I said, this does not entirely matter. It does not entirely make a difference if they win the province or not. It's by riding. Uh, it's not like an electoral college system. But we know the NDP does very well up in Nunavut as well. Now, is there any evidence that Nunavut actually exists? Um, just like New Mexico, probably not. Same thing with Northwest Territories. But again, I think the NDP will likely hold that seat there unless there's some underlying factor that I'm just not aware of because I don't pay that much attention to Canadian politics. But I would expect the Liberals to hold up in the First Nations heavy, uh, very urban uh, provinces up in the Northwest, like Yukon, 
uh, where all the population that's there is either in the First Nations or it's concentrated in Whitehorse. They will probably hold in Yukon Territory, Northwest Territories. Conservatives, I think, will still hold on in Alberta. They will still hold on in Saskatchewan. Actually, I had those backwards. Uh, Saskatchewan, just for the record, is the one that looks straight up and down. Alberta kind of has that little curve to it. Alberta is more populated. It's more conservative. We've all seen the memes about the 51st state before. So the last one we have is Manitoba. Now, Manitoba, last time it went uh, conservative. Uh, I do think that the conservatives may regress a little bit, but I think the NDP, the NDP might actually pick off Manitoba. Uh, in a way, in terms of the amount of seats that they will have. If they just gain two seats there in conservatives and, and you have the PPC that is taking votes away, they might be able to gain, I don't know, that's going to be a tough one. I, I think conservatives, they might hold on. Uh, it, it really depends. This one could go either way. This is a swing province. But either way, liberals are likely to win. Trudeau will hold on. However, he's going to have a minority government more so than ever because the NDP and Trudeau do not get along. They could have formed a coalition last time. They didn't. I don't think they will again this time. Two years later, they are going to have two more years of Trudeau, more than likely, which is disappointing. But the conservatives, I think, are even more of a joke at this point because uh, they're supposed to be conservative and they don't conserve anything, literally at all. Uh, even on economic issues, they're not even really solid at all. They just serve the elite anyways. So this is what my prediction is. I hope the PPC screws over the conservative party as much as possible because they need to be taught a lesson and the conservative party's not going to win anyways. Uh, this is my seat prediction. I think compared to 2019, the liberal party actually will lose some seats to the NDP, uh, which will weaken their uh, control, which you could argue is a good thing and a silver lining. The conservative party will lose seats as well. Um, across across the nation. They will lose approximately only six seats, partially because of the rise of the NDP uh, that we're seeing here. The PPC, however, they're going to get like 9% of the voters, so, but they're only probably going to get one or two seats. Two seats is me being generous to them, but if they get two seats, it would be great. Uh, at least get the ball rolling because they could potentially replace the CPC, and this will be a wake-up call. Bloc Quebecois, I think they'll regress a little bit in the seat count, partially due to the rise of the NDP. And the Green Party, I think the Green Party, they're going to lose even more ground. I think they'll retain one seat, if that, at this point. But uh, they're not really that relevant. So this is my final prediction for... The Canadian election. It's a little bit of a shorter video today. I would recommend you guys watch my last two videos. Not too many people saw them, but they are extremely informative, especially the last one I did. A lot of people are saying, uh, what do you think we should do to reform our election system so we're not counting ballots for two weeks and we don't have, you know, 2020 election month again? And how do we fix the system? That's what my last video was about. So I'd recommend you guys watch that. Uh, as well as the video before that talking about Biden and how he's weaponizing the border crisis for electoral purposes, even though it might not end up being that successful if there's a red wave in 2022 to stop his agenda. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle. Out.